So just giving a kind of heads up in case you're wondering what is the itinerary like uh, or if you didn't read through, you just uh, sign up because you like to travel. <laughs> But I want to I want to make sure that everyone has the information about what's happening, so you don't feel so lost. Uh, yeah. So uh, this week uh, I'm saying this only for the seven days from Paris to Paris. Of course, we will continue onwards uh, the next day as well after going back to Paris. But I'm talking about this uh, route going in a circle. Okay. So first day driving all the way from Paris to Lausanne. Okay. So this is one of the longest days we do. Uh, about 650 kilometers in total okay that's why it takes so long to get to Lausanne um, so uh, we drove all the way from Paris and we're going through some regions of France okay so France is very big it's one of the largest countries by area of the European Union and uh, we're driving through this highway okay the A6 you can see the sign on the on the side of the road A6 Okay, so the A6 will take us almost all the way down to uh, Basel. Uh, Basel is on the border of Switzerland. So now these regions we're going through are also very historic parts of uh, France. Each region of France has very distinct, unique features about it. Okay, so as you can look outside the window and you see mostly is land covered uh, for uh, agriculture. So most of the land is used uh, for agriculture in uh, France. So France is a big producer of uh, some of the products that you might have already heard about, like wine, yeah, cheese, cheese and uh, ham. So those things are like the one of the staples of the French uh, cuisine, of the French kitchen. Uh, and uh, so this region we're going through uh, is the area of uh, it's two areas we're touching today one of them is Burgundy okay Burgundy it's a uh, it's a place for uh, producing wine so this is a very famous wine region okay some of the most famous vintages come from here of this region okay we're not going to see much of these wine uh, yards, you know, like where they create the wine because it's off the track. Uh, but since uh, the Roman times, the Romans were the first to start cultivating the grapes for the wine. Okay, so that was introduced uh, about 2000 years ago. Imagine that. So, 2000 years of history of wine making in some of these regions. So it's a very popular uh, way. If you if you're really interested in the French culture, I would not recommend going to Paris. Uh, Paris is a different world altogether, and the French um, countryside is where uh, life is basically. Um, so that's where you find the the most unique uh, architecture, and each smaller part of these regions have something unique about it. Okay, so uh, we're driving through this area of Bourgogne and uh, we're going to pass by the city of Dijon. Dijon is famous for mustard. Yes, I heard someone say mustard. So Dijon mustard is one of the staple foods of the region. So uh, if you like the cheese, normally uh, you eat it with a mustard on it. It's very, very uh, nice with the uh, white wine. Okay, so they produce white and red wine in the region. Okay, and uh, so actually many of the regions uh, have different, distinct, unique uh, characteristics for making wine. And so this area uh, which we go through is called Burgundy. It's a uh, it's a name uh, is a very old name because Burgundy used to be a very uh, famous uh, duchy. Okay, so this is where the Dukes of uh, Burgundy uh, prospered, and that's uh, in the time of the 13th, 14th century. That was the, the peak of this uh, Burgundian empire, I would say empire, but it's a small kingdom, basically. And they also including uh, Flanders and the Netherlands. So they were uh, always fighting uh, to dominate the region, and uh, they were not part of France back then.
So France, as we see today, as a unified country, it took many centuries to become as one uh, nation, I would say nation, because now as France is one people, of French people, but each region has their own uh, unique uh, peoples. So uh, each region have also different traditions, different clothing and so on, but now more and more uh, as we, we became an uh, industrial uh, country, uh, most people live in the same kind of way, uh, but small towns also exist still, but mostly is touristic places. So the, if you can, uh, if you have a map of France where you see where we're going through now, uh, in this area, it's very close. We, as we're driving down this road, we're getting closer and closer to the uh, area which is close to the border of uh, Germany. So the next door neighbor to uh, the east is Germany. So there used to be a lot of fighting between the French and the Germans throughout the history from the medieval ages all the way up to the end of the Second World War. Okay, and uh, important uh, things to mention: um, the the wars uh, between uh, the French and the Germans also happened in the Napoleonic Wars, and after in the First World War, this region was the mostly brutal fighting in this area. Okay, later on we're getting closer to these areas like Verdun. Verdun is one of the most uh, famous. Uh, because they, they built a fortress so to protect the heart of uh, France from the invaded Germans but in the First World War uh, more than one million soldiers died in that battlefield so the, the Germans did not succeed in destroying Verdun but they call it the bloodbath of Verdun because thousands of soldiers died uh, every day in the uh, First World War and actually the only the, the Germans were only about three miles away from capturing the city but they did not succeed at the end of the war they gave up and left because uh, first world war which is the most important for this region many things were destroyed by the Germans many small towns wiped off the earth so they don't exist anymore but some of the places survived and they rebuilt or restored uh, the, these towns, these uh, cities uh, so most of these uh, smaller cities uh, they still uh, maintain the, the old ways uh, the different uh, architecture styles from different eras but uh, in Europe as you will see uh, the most distinct uh, buildings that you can always find uh, in uh, Italy as well as in France uh, are the buildings of the church. Okay, so the church uh, in the medieval times were the first organized builders uh, of different uh, monasteries. Okay, also in this region uh, you have the monastery of Cluny uh, and Fontenay. Those are the most famous medieval centers for uh, the church okay so uh, and I'm not saying the Catholic Church because uh, in that time period all these new um, monastery uh, orders came to being and they had their own governance basically and so uh, you heard of monks right so the monks were basically the uh, the first people to uh, connect uh, civilization through uh, paper writing so uh, teaching as well. So the first places to teach uh, reading and writing were by the monks. And the monks were also kind of like self-dependent. Uh, so they, could, they, they re relied on their own trade, crafting, etc. So most of the town cities that grew out from uh, those areas, which were run by the monks, later on becoming bigger cities. Okay, so even Paris or uh, any other city that you see, you can still see today, where normally uh, had foundation, something to do with the church. Okay, so the church wasn't just a place where you go to worship uh, at the weekends. They were uh, having also uh, political 
uh, and economical uh, you know power and so uh, in in France also that uh, created the society uh, throughout the Middle Ages and so on uh, until the age of enlightenment uh, in France the the majority of the cultures were influenced by religion okay and so uh, writing uh, and reading was only uh, the power of the clergy and the monks and also monks produced not just uh, books uh, they produced also cheese uh, one of the first uh, places where they produced iron works uh, they're working with iron uh, making weapons tools etc they were the first ones actually by the monks of Fontenay Fontenay is a very famous place uh, still standing today but very different from uh, from what you would expect not so grandiose buildings they built um, it's most like a very uh, simplistic okay so uh, why I'm saying this is because you have to understand that in a time period uh, the church was corrupted uh, by greed and uh, and the, the popes were building palaces for themselves and not living like real Christians simple life so uh, they were not showing the good uh, example for the practitioners of the faith so some of these orders uh, came to being like uh, uh, the the monks that created uh, you know like their separate place just so they would uh, they would be uh, like the Franciscan order the Franciscan order is one of the most uh, prominent in the in the history of uh, medieval times because they they kind of uh, were uh, living uh, through, uh, you know, like ascetic uh, lives. So, you, you know, like they, they give up on earthly pleasures, eating simple and working hard and uh, praying uh, many times in the day, doing meditation and uh, prayers uh, five, six times a day and living in a very small quarters and very simple. So they were very opposite to uh, what uh, the Rome uh, clergy was doing at that time and so th this affected also the religion uh, in a way and also the people uh, and the culture around them so uh, yeah that's some interesting facts about what was going on back in the old days in this region now most of these places uh, are visited by tourists uh, every year so for those who are more interested in uh, the aspect of seeing uh, what uh, the medieval uh, French uh, areas look like, that's more like it. So uh, in Paris, as we will see later on also, we're visiting Paris in our trip, it is a very different world. If you come inside Paris, it's like a different city, a different uh, mentality, different people. As in the countryside also, people change and uh, each region, uh, people are different. If you go to South France, as we will do at the uh, uh, after leaving Italy, we go down to the French Riviera. You also see very different uh, people, different lifestyle, uh, more beach life. Uh, and then here, mostly rural farming people and living off the land, okay? But there is not so many people actually who live in these uh, little towns, but some people uh, who don't like the cities, they uh, retain the old fashioned way of living, uh, farming, producing uh, cheese uh, and different produce grains and so on there's a lot of uh, uh, good stuff uh, for the French food that comes from these different areas of uh, France okay so uh, today's France is very different from back in uh, back in the old days uh, because as you see they are one of the most developed countries of the European Union okay so as you all know uh, in here they are using the currency the euros okay so they only accept euros uh, so the whole trip actually because we're going to places except for Switzerland they have the same currency in this we call it the eurozone as we are traveling in the European uh, Union except for Switzerland the Swiss use a different currency the Swiss francs but uh, you don't need to worry about it because if you want to buy something just use a card so uh, easiest way to do it don't worry about it 
so Swiss francs is different from the euros okay so it's a price difference I'm not sure how much it is I will check for you later what's the current rate now uh, but normally the euro is, is a bit stronger uh, currency than uh, the Swiss francs so throughout the trip don't worry about the, the money just uh, you need euros for most most cases okay uh, so yeah France is one of the founders uh, of the European uh, Union uh, before it was just a economical union between some of the member states that are, exist today with Germany with the Netherlands with Luxembourg they formed a kind of alliance for uh, free, allow, allowing uh, easier free trade uh, so that was the first kind of uh, political uh, union that they started and then uh, developing into something more uh, interesting and uh, more difficult to probably handle uh, but this uh, uh, we call it the European Union now and there's many member states joining in and becoming kind of like a one state uh, but they each uh, place still retain their own uh, policies uh, for for their own governance and their own laws and etc but uh, France is one of the prominent uh, players in the political uh, game here so because they have such a huge economy and especially their export is the biggest thing export goods throughout the world as you all know uh, the main things about France right uh, mostly good quality products right that's what you know uh, like uh, Louis Vuitton Chanel uh, Dior and uh, so on so those are the luxury brands that they created because they realized that okay uh, we need to have a certain uh, standard that we can uh, attract uh, people for our products because you know China can make it too China can make everything you can make but yeah, so uh, because of that, they uh, they've been focusing uh, always to keep the French products French, meaning uh, they are trying to retain the quality. And uh, well, it's not always true, though. But uh, I would say the uh, the food is something, especially the wine and champagne. Those produces always uh, maintain a good quality uh, and probably even in your hometown you can buy the French wine now uh, probably more expensive than here uh, here you can buy it pretty cheap because they produce a lot but the more expensive the wine the better the quality so it's uh, true um, yeah, so one of the main big exporters also but we can also count export as tourism so tourism is one of the factors that drives the economy. It's not the largest ones, but tourism here, it's one of the main things. As you will see later on when we get to Paris, it will be packed with tourists. Of course, since uh, COVID, a lot of things changed and uh, tourism uh, slowed down, actually stopped for about two years. And uh, it also caused a lot of problems uh, for, uh, for a lot of people, right? Because uh, a lot of people live off tourism here in uh, France and uh, they have one of the most visitors uh, of any uh, European country or in the world per year so uh, they had to uh, you know suffer through the this economic uh, problem and still I think they're still waiting for uh, uh, a lot of people to come back and so everything goes up the prices are getting uh, higher here and more expensive to actually live in France uh, actually it's interesting about the French people here that uh, uh, their economic uh, system uh, protects uh, the people here so uh, it's meaning like if you get a job for example if you get the job then you're lucky but uh, uh, once you get a job it's uh, almost impossible to get you fired um, so because the laws protect the workers which is great uh, but also it's a problem it's a source of problem because imagine you have a bad worker and you can't fire them 
So French are very good in complaining and making trouble, uh, but uh, very lousy and working hard. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, so they are not the most famous hard workers. I'm not saying people don't work hard here, but they, they are not known well for that, for sure. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things, because they have the, the history behind it, is that you remember the French Revolution started it all uh, with changing from the feudal system, from the monarchy to a republic and to a democracy a republic and to a democracy later on which also required the change of attitude and uh, giving the freedom for people and protection for the people uh, against uh, tyrannical governments well it works most of the cases but i don't think there is a perfect system anywhere in the world uh, but that's one of the things like uh, nowadays is a lot of trouble for the government uh, that they have to pay also a lot of money for uh, benefits right so let's say you uh, lose the job but you've been working for long and then now you're getting paid by the government so it costs a lot of money for the government to maintain these policies and also the uh, in now today's market the problem is they're looking for workers but they cannot find them so uh, it's a it's a kind of a backwards thing but it's a, now this this time is going through a kind of recession throughout the world uh, maybe you already felt the, the beginning of it uh, but it's happening also here in France so uh, people are more cautious about spending and uh, yeah so it's it's uh, slow it slowed down the economical progress they had actually the growth of the economy all these stuff many years ago 